In this video tutorial, we're going to show you how to add images to your Pro Landscape library. Now, if we take a look at some of the images that we've already added, you'll see that uh, the plant is semi-transparent, so I can see the plants behind this plant when I, when I move it around. And that's the effect that we're looking for to add images here. So let's go ahead and open uh, what we call the Object Builder, and we can find that under the Tools menu, and we can select Object Builder here. We can also access the Object Builder by selecting Start a New Object from the Startup menu, and we'll click OK here. Okay, now we need to go out and find the, uh, the picture that we've taken. Let's go ahead and select this one, which is a gated arbor. Now, this message is telling me that it recommends that I downsize this image uh, so that it's easier to work with. I'm going to click Yes here. Okay, so what we need to do here is to isolate the arbor from the background so that this is a, a transparent image. We have several tools to help us. Let's go up to our toolbar and select the, uh, the rectangular crop tool. And what this is going to do is I'm going to drag a rectangle around this and it's basically going to remove all of the colored pixels on the upper portion of this and on the lower portion of it. So I'll release it right about there. Okay, and when we see this checkerboard pattern, that tells us it's a transparency. Okay, now uh, that I have these pixels removed, what we can do is we can use our auto trim tool and that basically zooms in and cuts off those unneeded pixels there. All right, now let's go back up to our toolbar and select our eraser tool. And just as it says, I can come in and I can erase out the, uh, the colored background here. I can also go up to my toolbar and I can select the brush size to increase the size of that eraser, like so. Okay, it could be kind of tedious if I continue to use the eraser on there, so I have other tools to help me here. Let's go back up to the toolbar and select the Transparency Fill tool. What this does is it allows me to fill in a color and replace it with the transparency. So if I click on the uh, white area here, you'll notice that it fills that with the transparency. Plus, it picks up some of that sky because it was a similar color to the uh, pure white color here. Now, the Transparency Fill tool works in conjunction with the Tolerance slider here. Now, if we bump the Tolerance up and we click on an area to fill, like the gray area of this porch, what it's going to do is select similar colors. But with the Tolerance pushed up, it's going to pick up a lot more colors that are similar to that in the color spectrum. So that's really not going to be very helpful. So we need to be very careful when using the transparency and when we have the tolerance pushed up way too much there. So I'll go ahead and slide it back and I'll click on my undo button. Now since I've slided it back to around a 12% there, we're going to uh, click on that and it just picks up a, a much smaller area of that porch. Okay, now let's go ahead and show you the selection tools that we have to offer here. We have what's called the Magic Wand. And with the Magic Wand, it works very similar to the, the Transparency Fill tool. But what it does is it allows me to click on a color and just select it. Now when it turns blue here, that means that it's selected. So I can just click around there. Again, this one also works with the tolerance, so if I want to change the tolerance, the color tolerance, we can do that. Okay, let's go ahead and bump that up just a little bit more. and We'll click on the same position there, and you'll see how it, it grows that uh, selection area. Now, once I have uh, an area selected with this blue color, what we can do is we can fill that selection area with transparency by going up to the fill inside selection tool on our toolbar click there and it fills that area and also on our toolbar we have a clear selection we'll click on that and that will remove that uh, blue selected uh, area there also on the toolbar we have a selection brush which works very similar to the eraser tool where we just come in and we paint over an area 
but what we're doing is just selecting the area with this paint tool. Okay, so I, I'll just go ahead and select that and then select the fill inside selection tool and it will wipe that out. Now let's say I, I come in and I, I get a little too far into uh, the arbor here and I've, I need to undo this. What we can do is press the control key on the keyboard and what that does is it allows me to paint back and remove the area that I just selected. So when I go to fill it, now it just fills in the area that I want. Okay, now that technique works with uh, uh, nearly all of the selection tools. So you can hold down on the control key and it will it will basically unselect an area uh, that you uh, that you try to uh, paint over. Okay, the next tool on our toolbar is the rectangle selection tool. And this is going to be very handy when outlining uh, the arbor here where we have a lot of straight lines and I'll just come in and I'll make a selection like so with a series of rectangles. Very easy to do. Now let's go ahead and fill inside selection. Okay, the next tool we have here is the lasso tool. Now the lasso tool works a couple different ways. If we uh, click and hold our mouse button down and move our mouse around, we can have a free form shape here uh, with this lasso tool. Okay, then I, when I release, and then I'll right click and that will activate that selection and I can clear it out. Now the other way that this tool works is if I if I do a single click here and then I move my mouse and I click again and what this does is it gives me a polygon lasso. So I can just uh, select those pixels pretty easily and when I have some, a lot of straight lines to work with this is a very good tool to use. I'll just go all the way around the top of this. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, create a transparency here, but in a later video we're going to come back and show you how to clean this uh, existing image up. Okay, I right click and that activates it, and then I'm going to fill inside selection. Okay, again I'll use my lasso tool and come in and trace around the inside of this. Now if I need to zoom in to see something a little bit better, I can simply use my scroll mouse and scroll in and that zooms in and I can scroll back and that will zoom back out. Okay, we'll just go around that detail piece there. When I'm done I right click and that activates it. I'll zoom back out. Clear the selection. There we go. Alright, now what we can do is you know, I can use my rectangle area tool here and we can fill in between the bars of this uh, gate here. This is going to take a little bit more time, so I can come back and do this later. And we'll just go ahead and fill inside selection there. Okay, now this isn't perfect, but um, for time's sake, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and skip the rest of this and we're going to show you how to save this as a new object. What we're going to do is go up to the file menu and if I save it I can save it as a PLI object but it's not going to add it to the database if I do that. I can send it back to a project so if I have a project open it will take this image and add it to uh, an existing project like if I have a one time shot item that I need to use then I could do that or I'm going to uh, select here save as new object and that's going to allow me to save it to the database. So I click here, click yes. Okay, Now it's asking me uh, where I'm going to save it and I can save it in my user folder or if I wanted to I could go up to uh, say the outdoor living uh, structures and save it here. Let's go ahead and save it 
and we're going to call that an arbor and it's going to save it at a, in a PLI format and I'll click save here okay now I need to select the uh, category to place that in now let's go ahead and select outdoor living again and structures I'll click OK okay and what that does is it opens up the database and price editor now if this were a plant I could go in and I could put the botanical name and the Spanish name okay I'd also want to select the uh, the maximum height and the display height okay if it were a an object that grows I want to make sure that I select the growth speed For this one we don't want that one to grow so I'm going to select zero and the width we're going to just set the width at six foot on that if I have any uh, climate information we can go ahead and select the climate zone along with the sunlight and color and so on my image should show up here I don't need to do anything at this point okay if this were a plant I could go ahead and assign a symbol here or assign one of the rendered symbols over here I go to my pricing tab I could assign a price uh, that would show up on my proposal I'll go ahead and leave this as is now that I'm finished I can click close and that adds it to the library now if we come down to the outdoor living section and select structures my arbor now appears here ready to use 